Thunderbolt and Trinity is the technical Emerald Triangle, though everybody that doesn't live in the Emerald Triangle uh, speaks to their own Appalachia for sure. <laughs> So what we're looking at right now is this is all these farms that have donated to us from Heroes Harvest. There's a bunch of people that have come forward, a bunch of sponsors and shit, but these are the farms that we're dealing with. So I'm going to start fucking doing an outreach to everybody. What happened to your headset, bro? Oh, fucking broke. Oh, damn. Yeah, I noticed you hadn't been rocking that shit. I got a new one on the way. It's camouflage. Oh, okay. Match the jacket. You have a match. Match the hat, match the oh, jacket. Okay. You know what I mean. It is what it is. I like camo shit regardless. I mean, I'm fucking redneck like that. I know, bro. <laughs> if anybody likes camo, it's for sure you. Right. Yeah. And you're lining this up for what your travels tomorrow. Would it be not, to, dude, not. Or just the kind of. just the, the, whole, the whole thing. So, what we've got is we've got uh, over here, we have Dragonfly, is our dispensary, right? Okay. So dragonfly is our dispenser. To me, what's uh, my passion is moving our industry away from this, the. Uh, the framework that's been imposed on us by the war on drug, drugs. I mean, cannabis is not a drug. Right. Cannabis is not a drug. It's an herb that's been around for 5,000 years. But we're still not, we haven't moved the industry away from thinking of this as a get high drug. And it towards, towards the place where we understand it as medicine and we understand it as also a source of inspiration and creativity. That's the get high part. Whether you're a musician, an artist, or what have you, that's all great. But it's also essentially, at its kernel, a medicine which changes our whole attitude toward ourselves, toward each other, and our place in the larger society. So a few years ago, uh, the state set aside a certain amount of money, a chunk of change, like $10 million or something like that, to disperse to counties through county governments, specifically not to organizations or nonprofits, but through county governments to redress the damage that the war on drugs has done to particular members of the cannabis industry and the cannabis community. So um, in the case of uh, large cities like San Francisco and LA and, and etc., you have really disproportionately people of color through every step of the criminal justice system, from on the streets with police discrimination against them, through the court system, through sentencing. People with brown and black communities are treated much worse than white communities as a whole. Now, when you go into a place like Mendocino, which, believe it or not, is one of the lowest income counties in out of the 58 counties in California, you have uh, poor rural uh, farmers both white and then we have a lot of immigrants from Mexico who are working in our in our um, agricultural communities here who um, are some of the second, third or fourth generation cannabis farmers and were slapped down by um, the affiliation between the law enforcement in the county and camp and federal agents. Well, it was brought to their attention that, oh, forest lands and government lands in these, the Emerald Triangle um, families can't go hiking because they're scared to death of people with guns who are growing vast plots of cannabis. So they all got painted with this brush of being part of the Mexican cartels. They allocated a certain amount of money to go to law enforcement to go, go uh, wipe out these huge, huge groves up in forest lands and, and federal and state lands. Um, it was nonsense because the money they were getting paid to get, bonk as many people on the head as possible because they were getting paid per bust. And why in the heck would these guys want to trudge with 
you know, huge armaments on their back and all this and, and trash bags, you know, miles up into the hills to where these big grows were when they could just go the low-hanging fruit and bust and chop down small family farms. They're going to get the same money, so why would they want to do that, right? So you had this huge war on our community and this is our back to landers, our subculture, our cannabis community, not Mexican cartels that law enforcement was making a pants load of money off of. Um, and the trauma and the PTSD that our farmers experienced every bit as discriminating, discriminatory, and as harmful as what happened to inner city youth who were rounded up for having a joint in their pocket and sent to prison for five years. So it's like, you know, the war on drugs, by all accounts, was a complete abject failure other than to allow law enforcement agencies around the country to buy more tools and toys and make a lot of money off of us. And actually, I found someone up there who we're going to work with, with the equity grant, yeah. who their entire farm was completely raided and they became the patsy on the mountain. Yeah. for the cops. Um, you know, an amazing family, an amazing story, who they are. Um, and it, so it was neat to go up there and see the differentials of the families up there and how they're operating sure. from Long Creek Ranch, which is a really small little ranch up there, and then to see what Kingsview is doing. For us, from our side, it's amazing that they're donating to us to go through Senate Bill 34 to come all the way here to end up with, ultimately to end up with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you. we chose to not I had several people like, oh, we could get 148 this distribute or uh, retails and all this. And I said, no. I said, what we're going to do very simply is we're going to create two local points initially. Right. And what I want to do is I want to create, I don't want it to be, if you're one of the lucky 50 veterans in the area that showed up at the right time, you got it. Yeah, right. um, I wanted to create consistency that we can begin to engage our veteran populace here locally right. with that free consistent cannabis gift that they come through right. and that they're able to come in and go, wow, this is something brought to you by all these amazing partners because I can't do it alone. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. the, nor, the, nor would you want to. You know, yeah. and, and so it takes a village, as yeah. they say, right? Yeah, absolutely. No, I really like how you're saying it. You're going for quality, not quantity. It's so hard on the hugger. It's so hard. I like it. I know. You know? It is. But I'm, I'm glad, and, and we're really excited to continue to work with you. And, the, you know, thank you so much for having me out. Like, yeah. I'm really, really truly glad. So, Dragonfly is our dispensary that we have here in Fort Bragg. That's okay. gonna help serve Mendocino County in general, right? Okay. And then up in the Gongier, or, is it the Gongier? It's the Gongier. It's up at the Gongier, right? And I gotta make sure I'm pronouncing that right. Um, we have uh, Steve up there, and he has a distribution company. Okay. The Gongier is connected to the Gongier, which is both a distribution and a retail. Gotcha. So we actually worked out really well to have our distributors attached to our fucking, uh, to our retailers. Right. So that makes for a lot less movement of stuff having to happen, and, and it makes it a lot easier to get it directly there because the time frame everybody's talking about is ridiculous. So let's mean? see if we can get a hold of... What time frame? What are you talking about? They're talking like getting a pound processed a month. So it takes 30 months to process 30 pounds and for one of the places. For one of the places. One of the places. So we got to get it distributed amongst a couple of folks to work together here to get this thing done. It's not even, they, they, and it's not that they wouldn't do more for us. They don't have the staff. Let's see. All right. Well, we're here right now. We're trimming up some uh, a donation that was given to our veterans. We're trimming it all up, and we're gonna. We came here to these guys because it's the next step. We're calling this a soldier salad, and it's many different varieties. Obviously, in a direct situation, you're gonna go per each variety. But um, I set you guys up because you know why not make it harder? I apologize, gentlemen. Just the manpower alone to trim becomes ridiculous. I don't have it. To, to turn around and take it where it all still has a leaf on it, 
is a process in itself. So what we're here to do is use their machinery, learn about their technology, what they're doing, and to see how we can take all that product there and go from a way where it's nowhere near ready for me to donate to getting ready to be able to put it in the hands of veterans who are in need. You're TJ, right? Yeah, so I'm TJ with the original resonator and also industry processing solutions. We use a, what's called a cryo trim process where we introduce liquid CO2 through the center of a rotary separation apparatus, which allows us to get the exterior of the leaves just brittle enough to fracture and then fall from the flower. And that's uh, our patented and trademarked cryo trim process. So I'm gonna stop this one here in about 20 seconds. And we'll pop it open and take a few more. All right. So it's been another three and a half minutes. Let's go ahead and pull it. <laughs> Three strikes you, you do want to be careful to make sure you pull those out to get the cell phone temperatures. Do you see how much trim we ended up with? Whole, whole body trim. So there's a, you look at this trim underneath the microscope, you see whole body trichome head still intact. There's no scissor or blade, it's sliced through it. So you don't have any smalls, if you notice. It's all just salt, good sugar leaf trim, which is great for extracts. Oh. <laughs> That's literally a mountain weed. Because of the rise and the fall of the flower, and the shape or contour of the bud, it's not designed to take these big leaves off. So this is the nature of our cleanup. I guess we can throw those packs back in here yeah, too. They, they seem fine. Too. Yeah, they do seem they fine. Seem fine. I, and that got actually really cold. Yeah, and didn't pop or anything. Bovita for the win. <laughs> Bovita. You know, we're bladeless, so there's no scissors or blades involved, you know, which slice up the material and you end up with cellulosic material and plant matter throughout your, your trim clippings. You know what, you guys, thank you so much. I, it's been uh, one hell of a journey to get to this moment together and, and begin to, to kind of come to um, fruition. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mr. It's amazing. working with the ability and we're bringing in and we're going to take in our first five veterans and those veterans we're going to put them into opportunities within the cannabis industry i like that i've been doing that that's what i tell people folks i love those kids they've done a lot with weed but i can't keep up with it anymore hell no you can't and i grew weed for 33 years you add it all up but it was all gorilla gone just about until yeah. the last 10 years or so it was all sneaking around in the woods, and mm -hmm. I never made, really made a profit. I gave too much away, and it was we made friends, really good friends, and we had fun jumping around in the woods. We didn't have anything. It really is. It's 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 a re-education of a marketplace that has lost itself up here. All the other things that were traditional to this area, generationally, why people came here, have stopped. So you literally have a environment that's created to where it doesn't know how to help itself it, it all the things it knew and then it, there's this mixed brack there's this mixed group that's like cannabis bad and another group that's like hey the only reason we've existed is because of fucking cannabis right this shit's been dead for a minute son but even the cannabis of bad side only are like that simply because of the education that they were presented there you go and, and a lot of people are starting to change slowly but surely on that as well. But for us to turn around and to Just like anything else in, the, in history that has been new and evolutionary. Some people get on, some people don't, and then they look back later and say, I don't know why I didn't. There you go. Hey Dan, this is Jacob Lawrence with MedVets calling you in regards to the Heroes Harvest uh, program that we're working on. And hey Ashley, this is Big Jake with MedVets. Uh, just following up with you. I know you're busy. Uh, Hey, is this Hannah? Hannah, this is Big Jake with MedVets. How you doing? Hey, what's going on, Steve? How's it going, Jake? Man, blessed. Just uh, preparing ourselves for all the, the fun to come. All right, cool. So, hey, uh, thanks. Uh, I know it was uh, 
Thanks for making up that timing stuff we're going to have one and then find out who's going to help to make sure everything from your donation follows track and trace. Totally. So that's really kind of the thing. And tomorrow I'm going to be up. I'm going to Arcata and then I'm going just past Bridgeville um, tomorrow. But I'm going to be up there about 8 a.m. in Arcata. set of tires since I started med vets on this fucking thing. Things cost damn near a mortgage if I could put tires on this bitch. The problem was is I grew up really rough. It's kind of this weird montage of like, you know, I would say a, a good example would be Sons of Anarchy meets the Waltons. <laughs> all right, so all right, all right. we got this. I can, I can get, I can dig that. I can dig it. I got, I got a mom who loved to death would give up the last piece of carpet to bring in someone from out that needed help yep, and stuff. Yep. Neighborhood mom. Same we, here. We, my parents were selling dope not only through the bike clubs but they're selling dope to the cops. Yeah. So sounds like we had a similar upbringing. <laughs> so I'm like sitting here like. I, I watched my dad shake the cops down and make them empty their pockets before they walk in our house. <laughs> like, so, he's like, you ain't planting shit. No, 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 no. You know what I mean? What do you got? Yeah, right. I'm like, I didn't know you could shake the cops down. <laughs> I didn't know you could have that conversation. So when you say bike clubs, biker, yeah. bikers, yeah, 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 yeah. I grew up um, in Philly and the bike groups there were the Warlocks and the Pagans. I, my parents sold drugs to the, I, I grew up knowing the, people in charge of those. I got caught up in they're helping a lot of locals go through the regulatory compliance. We started a company called One Degree Consulting around 15. Okay. And so for me, it's a whirlwind. That's why I'm like coming back to you about dates. I'm like, wait, so that was five years ago? We're like, so no, no, 15 no, is- Two and a half years the ago. The end of 15. Two years ago. It, it, the end of 15. That's when you had to have your, when... your, that they allowed all the farmers who'd been growing uh, quasi-legally or illegally to be the first ones in line to get a license in Humboldt County. So out of the 15,000 farms that were in Humboldt, how many of them went for a license? It was like- It was like somewhere between 80 to 200 something. Well, totally in the, in, all in all in the end, uh, I think about 1,200 farmers or to 1,500 farms applied. Okay. Only like, you know, about a thousand went through last time I had checked. Okay. Legal so. farms, so there's roughly a legal roughly a thousand legal farms in Humboldt a okay. few months back. And we identified four years ago that there's 15,000 farms in Humboldt right. out there. So oh, less I... than 10% of the people who were grown in Humboldt and farms actually ever came in for a license still to this day. It's uh, you know, there's a, there's a reason why maybe I, I've had an, I've had a very easy time integrating into Humboldt when I got here. You know, right. people looked at me up and down. I was 24 years old. I opened a grow shop on the highway and I didn't know anybody at all here. Right. So that was, that's a, yeah. that's kind of a tough sell, you yeah. know, but well, I've been used to a tough it. sell when you grow up in a, in a lifestyle right. like you're talking about, like I can relate to. Yeah. I was always brought up to think that the cops were fucked up. That oh. Anybody with a suit or tie was fucked up. Dude, all I the still people don't from go the government hospitals. are fucked up. I have I have anxiety and I've passed out in the hospitals plenty of times. This shit's real though. People don't get it all the time. Right. Like this kind of shit's real. And like when I moved to this community, I understood the, the dynamics right. tenfold because my parents were selling meth and making meth and PCP and hanging out with bikers. <laughs> right. I, this shit ain't. Uh, this, this, is the, this is the latter easier side of the game. It is, it is. So it's like I grew up on that side of it. I never wanted to bring that stuff to my family. And when I found Humboldt and I realized cannabis was medicine before I got here, it all just came together. You know, awesome. and healing is what is, has been my mission. It's know? a trip that you come all the way from Philly, right? Oh yeah. So, like, Steve, can I ask a question? Which, I mean, how, yeah. how is it you got involved with this? Because I've not been told any of the relationships, so I'm just curious. As to yeah, so yeah, we met through Ryan, you know, uh, through Bovida. Oh. Uh, he uh, told me that we might connect. He's like, oh, have you ever met Jake, you know, Big Jake? 
med vets he's like besides the business stuff you're doing he's like you guys should meet and uh since we're launching our distribution company gondry distribution um you know we're, we're looking to align with different uh partners and stuff you know we're not just in this trying to make money you know we we're, we're building our business around uh morals and like the principles that uh we want to be in the world so it's not about trying to act like somebody right right <laughs> we want to help vets we want to align with other like-minded individuals who are seeing the light and connecting the dots ryan was one of those dudes we were talking about stuff when he mentioned what was going on I, we got on a quick call or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden I was like, oh yeah, guess what we're doing? We're gonna get the medicine from the farms to into our distribution warehouse. We're gonna package it up in this special packaging that we're gonna work with med vets to get. Yeah. And we're gonna deliver this medicine to our local dispensary so that vets in Humboldt County and surrounding areas or vets that are traveling through can pull in to the Gondry in McKinleyville and get donated medicine to connect the dots. Met the team. I just gave all your team hats. So all right. All Mike cool. here. Uh, he helps manage over our operations uh, at our distribution space oh, right nice. now. And the kitchen that we have is right here behind the dispensary, or it's an infusion license. Okay. So we're going to be infusing foods and beverages for the legal cannabis market here. Okay. And between that and the rest of this building over here is North Coast Horticulture Supply. And North Coast Horticulture <laughs> Supply is the retail grow shop that I opened up 20 years ago. Okay. And uh, so from that all the way down is all grow supplies. And Real right quick. next door is One Degree Consulting. That's where we had started, that had our consulting company going. So I, so I caught that. I caught that in, in really, you've got this, this, uh, you got the market cornered, brother. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, they, they talk about uh, you know fully integrated or right. vert vertically integrated and stuff. This is uh, more of a life cycle ecosystem, like total community situation here. So, folks, if they're home growers, uh, they can come here and get their six plants. They can go over here and get all their grow supplies. And when they when they're waiting for their medicine to be ready, they can come and get their medicine at the dis at the dispensary. Started with a 40 50 years ago and a peat moss bog. When I came here, there was <laughs> nothing but trees itself. and stumps right and here. So I went from the ones who make it clear to me that even though they're illegal, they're, they're still the baddest outlaw motherfuckers you know. <laughs> Well, my husband and I have been living in Willow Creek for the last 10 years, and when we first moved up here, we were living in a tent. I was pregnant with my second son.